Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I'm going to do something a tiny bit different because it's my kid's birthday this weekend. So I am going to restore a present that I got, this Game Boy Advance cartridge. And this is the Game Boy Advance cartridge for Pokemon Emerald Edition or Smaragd Edition in German. This is the German version. And as you can see, it's in relatively poor condition. It does work though. So obviously my kid is into retro gaming and this was an actual wish. So I got this off eBay. These are relatively expensive because obviously the Pokemon games are still uh, very popular, even the retro ones or even more so maybe. The kid owns this Nintendo DS, which is, uh, I like these. These are uh, Nintendo DS Lite, the smaller ones. And actually you can play Game Boy Advance games on them without much hassle. You just pull out this uh, cover and then you can stick your Game Boy Advance game into the bottom there and start it up. So that's pretty neat. And these are actually tested this before, so this cartridge works fine. We are going to do some restoration work on this, so it looks a bit nicer. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs and other smaller scale projects. In case you want to make your own cartridge PCB, there's a plethora of open source or rather open hardware options to make your own PCBs for all kinds of game cartridges. If you want to have one of those produced, PCBWay is a great option. They deliver excellent quality PCBs and have quick turnaround times, friendly service and the prices are super reasonable. So check out the link in the video description back to restoring the Game Boy Advance cartridge. Uh, many of these cartridges, Game Boy Advance cartridges as well as regular Game Boy cartridges, have a battery that uh, buffers various things. In these Pokemons, uh, there's a couple more for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, usually the battery is used to buffer an internal clock, so the game reacts to the actual time of day, and the battery in here is only used to buffer that. Uh, it's not used to save games or something like that, which it is used for in some older Game Boy, original Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games and things like that. Uh, I still think that it's a good idea to replace the battery in this. Also, I ordered a replacement label, which isn't here yet, and I'm going to put that on there. And maybe you can see in this area here, the case is a bit scratched, so that's not really great. I'm going to do something about that as well. So yeah, let's open this up, remove the label, clean the case and the cartridge and replace the battery. That's the plan for today. And of course Nintendo doesn't really want you to tinker with these, so they used uh, these tri-wing screws, which are the same ones they also used on the Game Boy. And uh, I think I have a screwdriver somewhere for that. This is my uh, iFixit bit, bit set, which is super handy for things like this. Yeah, and these are tri-wing screws. And after taking the screw out, we can just slide the top half of the cartridge shell. Yeah, as you can see, there's the battery that uh, I think somebody replaced really shoddily. And yeah, my screw post is nearly gone. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do some work on that. This doesn't look great. Somebody used a lot of tape in there. I'm going to take this out here. Obviously, yeah, this half looks rather intact. There's a bit of crackle there. This is an original version. There's also reproduction cards for this tiny little board. 
which has nothing on the back side really, except for some test points. Wow, okay, this has been butchered. So we're going to have to desolder this. And this is actually soldered in over the chip underneath there. Yeah, this looks like crap because it is. Just let me, let me just quickly check the voltage on this battery. It should be fully charged. Yeah, it's three volts, as you can see, which is the nominal voltage for these. I'm still going to replace this because I have no idea how old this battery is. This game came out in 2005, so it's, it qualifies as retro, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to not damage uh, more of the board than absolutely necessary. And you don't want to heat these batteries too much. Okay. So I'm also going to clean the old solder from these pads because we don't want to mix it with our solder. Taking a closer look at this uh, replacement battery that was in there, somebody soldered these tabs to a standard coin cell, I think. And that's pretty risky, actually, because you don't want to overheat a lithium cell. Uh, they burst out in flames pretty easily if you uh, overheat them, short them. It's a far better idea to get one that has these solder tabs already on there, which are usually tick welded to the cell, uh, which means there's only a very short appliance of heat to the battery, which usually doesn't stress them as much as applying a soldering iron to the cell. So yeah, that's what I got. We are going to solder this in. Thankfully, on the board, there are markings for the plus and the minus. So positive goes here, negative goes here. And on the battery, you can see this side has a plus, so that's this tab, and the other tab is the negative. So this should go in here, like so. We don't really have to isolate it that much, but I'm still going to put a bit of Kapton tape underneath, I think, so uh, to insulate it from this chip here, shorting out some of the legs, which I don't want. Kapton tape is just this heat-resistant sticky tape that basically you can use for applications where things get heated up. <laughs> I also like to use it for just insulation purposes sometimes because it sticks really well. I'm just going to bend my tabs a bit without breaking them off and we should be good to solo this in. Just quickly checking if this battery is good before I solder it in. Yeah, that's 3.3 volts, that's completely and fully full. The other one was at the brink of being empty. So yeah, this is a better idea, I guess. Let's solder it in. Just applying some flux to the pads and to the battery terminals, placing it in here, and then soldering time. I'm just going to clean with some alcohol and a brush. Now we should have our clock battery in place. In order to clean this edge connector on the cartridge PCB, although it looks relatively clean, I'm just using a pencil eraser and I'm just applying some force which usually works wonders. And then we are going to clean the eraser residue, which acts as a very, very mild abrasive, so you don't damage the gold plating on the connector. After that, you want to remove the residue. I'm using isopropanol alcohol, which is 99% isopropanol. 
or isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It did look pretty shiny before, but there was some dirt. You can see that some of the eraser got a bit dark. It's only one side of the PCB that has connections on it. The other side is just plain. So from a technical point of view, this should be nearly as good as new at this point. We're going to test this and then we're going to continue with refurbishing the case a bit. As for my cartridge enclosure here, you can see there's some pieces of plastic broken out of this screw post here and yeah, that's not in the best condition. So I'm going to try to rebuild that to some extent using this uh, Uhu Plus special plastic glue, which is a plastic welding glue. It basically dissolves the plastic and welds it together, which should make it as strong as if it was new. I think I want to do that before doing any cleaning and removing the label, which is the next step. Let me just put some of these plastic parts back in here, soaking it in uh, this plastic glue. I hope we can somewhat rebuild this, at least to some extent. The screw is not strictly necessary to hold this together, so this is not anything structural, thankfully. But still, I want it to kind of grab again, so yeah, I'm just trying to rebuild this a bit and make it stronger. This should dry in a matter of minutes, usually, so I'm just going to leave it like this and come back. I carefully put the screw in uh, before letting this fully dry, so we have the correct spacing for the threads. I'm going to let this dry some more, I'm going to take the screw out after it settles a bit and then let it fully dry and it should be maybe as good as new plastic. It's probably never going to hold as well as when this was new, but yeah, better than before, I guess. I think my screw post repair went rather well. It doesn't look original, but this is now pretty solid and it also fits the screw. I already checked that. So I guess it's time to put the circuit board back in here and try it out. Time for a quick function test. <laughs> Game seems to still work, that's good. Okay, and the time seems to be running again. Otherwise we would get an error prompt there. Seems to work so far, so we're good to clean the case and put it all back together, I guess. So I just prepared a bit of warm water with some dish soap and some window cleaner. Obviously we're going to take the circuit board out. I'm also going to remove the sticker at this point because I got a replacement for that. This should peel off rather easily. It's a metalized sticker. Yeah. And I'm going to remove the residue with some alcohol, I guess. Yeah, that worked rather well. And into the bath water it goes. I'm just going to leave this in here for a while and then uh, clean it thoroughly with a toothbrush and let it dry completely. Finishing off with some more isopropanol here and our glued bits should be uh, basically proper new plastics because the glue evaporated and is fully dry. So this should clean up really nicely and we don't risk breaking off bits of it. Okay, circuit board goes into the bottom half. Top half goes on top, clip it in place. Yeah, this really turned out nicely. Just going to try to put the screw back in at this point. Should probably grab again. Don't want to over tighten this, obviously. Okay, just waiting for the sticker now. <laughs> So 
So at this point, it's going to be a good idea to delete all data on the cartridge. So my save game is going to be gone that I used for testing. And there's actually a way to do that. We have to start the game and we're going to the title screen and we push up, B and select. And then it asks me if I really want to delete all data and I just say yes. And the data is going to be erased. And indeed, the save game is gone. The game is ready to be gifted to my kid. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it for today. The result is pretty nice and it nearly looks as good as new. Yeah, this was kind of a shorter video because I'm working on some bigger projects in the background. Just wanted to output something and I hope this is useful for some of you. Hope to be back with a more elaborate video pretty soon. Until then, thank you very much for your support on Patreon and on the channel memberships page and your single donations on Ko-fi and your donations of hardware, obviously very much appreciated. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.